Britam is a very strong company with a very strong brand and with excellent people working for it. If you consider the results that we are going to present today against the backdrop of a number of things, it was the second year of COVID. The economy was picking up, therefore more activity, more incidents, therefore more claims, as you would expect. It was also a time when we had significant change within the business. Uh, we, if you recall, we the results for last year were not exactly um, the results you do want to be announcing. We had changes on the board and in management. But despite that, this company is very strong. It has delivered results and continues to deliver results. And we see the, the future um, being even brighter than it has been for the last year. The team that's going to present to you will show you the numbers. But I can give you uh, comfort that the strategy that's being implemented, we are on the right track. We have a brand that's really trusted by our customers. And we continue to maintain leadership in the industry. And uh, what we have seen is that even the market has reaffirmed our leadership position and we were able to get an award, which was for the Association of Kenya Insurers, whereby we maintained our leadership position for 15 years in a row. So our resilient operations was all about retaining momentum and also driving profitability. And how did we make the money in 2021? So I think the key thing was around growing our top line. So we did grow our top line by 12.8%. That's gross and premiums, as well as the management fees. Then we had a drop in expenses. We have rolled out some cost saving or some cost management initiatives to ensure that we have a sustainable cost base that's reducing over time. And we are seeing the results coming through. And as a result of that, we had a 2.1% drop in the normalized operating expenses. As you'll see from the presentation, we had some one-off business transformation expenses. But if you isolate them, the underlying costs are trending in the right direction. Then our OPEX ratio, again, is trending downwards. So from 36% 30, in 2020 to 32% in 2021. Then the other thing that also contributed was an increase in the investment strategy as well as growing our returns. So our investment income grew by 15.7% uh, during the year. So this is as a result of portfolio real I mean, realignments. So going for more of fixed income, then also managing our properties to ensure that we get to the occupancy levels that you are targeting. So that is what really drove the performance. And I think one of the key things is that our diversification strategy is starting to yield very positive fruits. So when you look at the international business, which again is being led by Kennedy, we are seeing a contribution of 26% of the top line coming from the, from the regions, which again is a very good contribution and really talks to our diversified strategy that we had rolled out. So when you look at our strategy, which is now going forward and which the chairman did allude to, our strategy focus is about the epic one Britain strategy. So it's all about delighting our customer. That's where our focus is. And how we do that is by putting the customer needs at the center of everything that we do. So that's going to be our focus for the next five years. And if we do that, then our customers will be able to experience one Britain. So they will not be experiencing life, general insurance, or asset management investments, but it will be one Britain. If you are a retail customer, we have a proposition that talks to you. If you are a retail customer, we have a proposition that talks to you. So coming to the key pillars of this strategy, it's been broken into two. So we are acknowledging that we need to fix the basics. And that piece of work is already underway with very good results as you'll be seeing through the financials that you'll be coming through. So we talk about fixing the basics and fueling the journey. It's about organizing around the customer. I did talk about the target operating model, which has been rolled out, which is more segment focused. Then underpinning those segments, we have the functions, which again are very lean and very effective. Beyond that, we're looking at leveraging technology. 
So having a unified platform that moves away from the silo-based ones that we had in the past to one that's unified, that looks at a customer from end to end and across the segments that I made reference to. Then the other critical thing we are looking out is turn around the key cost drivers. We want to have cost leadership within the business. So really bringing down the, 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 the costs to make them fit for the business. So that's one area of focus. Then again, shifting the investment strategy. So it's about investment and capital management to get an optimal return around the investments which we have. So once we, we, we fix the basics and fuel the journey, we now move into the phase of really embedding the customer centricity into the business. So this is happening concurrently as we fix the basics. It's really more around forging the strategic partnerships, which I did talk to earlier. So it's really ensuring that we partner with insure techs and how do we start disrupting the market? So that really remains our key area of focus, which, I did, as I did mention, is being led by Eva Kimani, who's here with us. Then again, on the retail and corporate, it's all about optimizing our approach to the customers. So it's a targeted and customized approach to the customers that we do have. So it's not one shoe fits all, but it's really understanding and being able to respond to our customers' needs. Then the next bit is around unlocking the next tier of customers. How do we get to this uh, mass market? And that will be done through a multi-channel strategy, which again is being done by Sorab. And we do believe that we have a market leadership position as it is now of 25%. And we believe that with the foundation we have, we should be able to build on that and really have a commanding leadership in that particular space. From a total business perspective, our um, business has done well in the period as has been uh, indicated. Our gross and uh, uh, income, uh, that's premium, and fund management fees have been up 13% compared to the last year. When we look at our investment income, and here we talk about interest and dividend income, it's up about 16%. And here, as has been said by the uh, GMD, we are looking at stabilizing our results over time. Uh, by uh, organizing our investments in a way that we have more stable uh, performance. So most of the money that we have acquired in the period or new cash has actually gone into fixed income investments, which means then there is more stability in our, in our performance. Operating expenses on a total basis from 57% uh, to about 44%. And then when we look at uh, normalized by removing the one-off expenses, we've reduced our OPEX ratio from 36% to 32% in the period. So our PBT has gone up 110%. Last year, you recall, we had a significant loss of 9.7 billion. We've now reported a profit of 1.1 billion. So the business has actually grown uh, across the various uh, uh, items. So when you look at uh, um, gross and uh, revenues, we've actually grown over time by 8%, but compared last year to this year, as I've said, 13%. When you look at our asset base, also growing steadily across the period, by about 25%. Uh, going on to the contributions from the regions, the life company is contributing 44% of our uh, income, the GI business contributing about 30%, and the region doing the remaining 26%. And here we show um, the growth in terms of our investment allocations. So you will note the, the big uh, green bar, which is um, investment in fixed income securities, a significant growth compared to last year. We have about 70% of our assets in fixed income securities. Uh, you will also note some growth in the equities, mainly driven by the market movements. And you will note we have about 7.5 billion or 7.7 .7 billion cash, which is uh, our liquidity pot uh, at any point. So that has also grown, uh, but I'll beat at about 100 million shillings. Our embedded value has actually grown compared to the earlier period. Uh, we had a 6.6% growth in our EV, in the life company. Um, the key drivers are the operational um, items. And you'll also note our uh, new business is significantly profit profitable. Uh, we have written business that is uh, profitable across the period. And we've not shied away from um, uh, focusing more, not on the top line, but on the bottom line.
from a life business perspective. In terms of contributions from across the, 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 the regions, so the regional GI businesses, as has been said, have contributed uh, 26% of our uh, 2021 premiums. The GI business still contributing a very big chunk of that. And when you look at um, uh, the, the, the performance over the period, very significant growth of about, um, uh, if I'm not wrong, 11%. Uh, the GI business in Kenya doing about 20% growth compared to the previous period, 2020, and the regions are 3.3% growth. The key driver for that in the regions is because of the forex foreign exchange movements, especially in South, South Sudan. Uh, going on to profitability, you will note that uh, most of the profitability for the GI business is coming from the regions, but it's because the Kenyan business had the one-off transformation costs. Looking at um, the GI business in Kenya on a normalized or equal basis, the underlying performance improved by 68% compared to 2020. Going on uh, to show the key uh, ratios, our OPEX ratios, as I said, are dropping uh, both from an overall and un the underlying, removing the one-offs. Our loss ratios have had uh, a flat, which as we grew the top line, the claims also continued coming, coming through. We have uh, returned to positive returns on equity at about 15% on a normalized basis. Our solvency uh, you will note the life company has declined and also the GI business, significantly driven by the regulatory changes. On a, a similar basis, the life company would have actually been at 164%, uh, and the GI business would actually, in 2020, have been at about one, 146%. So on an equal uh, regulatory basis perspective, the solvency is going up, but because of the changes in 2021, then there was a deep which, uh, which we are dealing with. For me, it's just to say the story really is the one billion um, profit before tax coming from where we came from last year is a significant improvement. And as just as what Moses highlighted, we can just again emphasize on the gross and premiums at 12.8%. Uh, and of course, uh, our growth in investment income, which was again up 15.7%, which continues to show that Britain Group Holdings is fundamentally sound and continues to deliver. And uh, with the new strategy, we believe that we'll be able to um, keep transforming the business and uh, keep growing original business, which continues to be a key contributor to our performance.